the microphone so everybody can hear. <laughs> so I'm on, and so uh, it's really good to be back in church once again. You know, last weekend we had a, a pandemic in my own little realm. I was sick, and so anyway, I am fine right now. I don't. There's no nothing. It's all gone. So praise the Lord for that. Just turn down the. There's a bit of an echo going on. So you turn down that echo. That'd be great. Wonderful. Wonderful. The echo is gone. So amen. Praise the Lord. Hope you all had a really good week. I surely did. I recovered. I did some work. And I'm feeling great right now. Man, I wish Jesus would come. Praise Jesus. Amen. And so let's sing. Amen. Let's sing this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's turn to our hymnals to 325. 325. Jesus saves. to your hymnal to 256, which does not match what is in the hymnal. It is, I will praise him, where it says, to God be the glory in <laughs> my thing here. So, 256, I will praise him.
let's tune, turn our hymnal to 206. 206.
that are given uh, paper. So there will be handouts every Wednesday night. There will be a handout given. Unless I haven't finished uh, previously, we'll finish and then we'll go on to the next. And so uh, just keep that in mind. And so it will be starting just in a couple of Wednesdays. Uh, well, in, in a week from next, this coming Wednesday, it will be starting. Amen. And so we'll just uh, uh, look forward to that time. Also, just notice uh, because of the COVID issue going around, just keep in mind uh, of uh, hand sanitizer, masks are on the back. Uh, if you need any other help with that, please just come to me or my wife and we'll make sure that we help you with that. Also, there is new Baptist bread on the back table as well, so they're there as long as you want. Uh, and and uh, there's a number of them there, so uh, if you want one of those, it's September, October, a good source of reading, amen, it should never replace your time with God, amen, it's just a good source of uh, good reading material that is free for the taking, amen, and so that's uh, for you folks, uh, amen. So uh, that's all the announcements I think we have this morning, uh, amen. Our normal custom was, before this whole thing happened, we would stand and shake hands. But our custom now is to say howdy. 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 So everybody's doing good. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Let's sing. Amen. Howdy from me. <laughs> Let's uh, turn our hymnals to 338. 338. Look and live. to uh, 645.
turn to your hymnals to 545. 545. Each step I take. Day through. When 
6. I want to begin reading there in verse number 22 is what I want to do this morning. And so uh, it's here. Jesus is here in this passage of scripture and uh, he's going to be teaching and lecturing on the bread. Amen. And so uh, he's got some uh, important uh, truths to show us. Uh, is what Jesus is going to do for this crowd here. There is a little bit of a ring there. If you could take care of that, that would be wonderful. And so, uh, uh, so if you found your place there, John chapter number 6, if you could please stand in respect for God and his holy word, we'll begin reading there in verse number 22. And the Bible says, The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there uh, was none other boat there, save the one un, where uh, into his disciples were entered, and, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away on, alone. Howbeit there came another boat, other boats from uh, Tiberias, nigh unto the place where, where they did eat bread. After that the Lord had given thanks." When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when uh, camest thou hither? Jesus answered uh, them and said, what Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because... He saw the miracles, not because you did eat the loaves and were, but because you were, because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work? The works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work, this is the work of God that believeth on him whom he hath sent. They said unto therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that they may see and believe thee? What doest thou what doest thou work? What didst, doest thou work? Anyway, I, it doesn't make me dust. Oh, see, there I go, dust. See, I wish I could, you know, properly see that. Uh, anyway, where was I? Now I lost my place. 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it uh, is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave, un, gave you not the, that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven for the for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world they said un, and they said and then said they unto him lord more evermore give us this bread and jesus said unto him i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst but i say unto you that ye 
also have seen me and believe not. All that my all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will, this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you, Lord, uh, for this morning. And Father, I do pray, Lord, that you would just have your will in your way, Lord, in our hearts. Lord, we seek thee. We seek thee in the way that uh, only you can uh, reveal the truth of the word of God to our hearts. Lord, we seek thee, and Lord, in the way that uh, you will uh, help us to make an increase in our faith toward thee. And so, Father, I pray for that one here this morning that is lost. Lord, that he would come or she would come uh, to the full understanding and be saved and be born again by the power of God. And so, Father, I pray that you would just have your will in your way. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would take away all the distractions of this world, all distractions in this auditorium. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would captivate our hearts and minds. Help us, Lord, to pay attention. Lord, I pray, Father, I love you and I thank you for all that you will do. In Jesus' precious and most holy name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Here we find in this passage of Scripture where Jesus is revealing the, to the crowd uh, the living bread, amen. Jesus is that living bread, uh, amen. And so, well, preacher, yeah, I already know that he is the living bread. And so with, it, with, with his discourse by Christ uh, involving the bread was given at least two different, it was a given at least at two different places. Some of it is spoken in a synagogue as he uh, taught in Capernaum there in, in chapter 6 and verse 49, uh, 59, it says, These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. So understand, Jesus is making known uh, what the, the living bread is, what's the true bread that man is to seek after, amen? And so we see, dear believers, that uh, even some uh, of it was even spoken of in the streets uh, by the seashore when Jesus met up with those who were looking for him. They, uh, there, were th there was a big crowd that was looking for him. As we saw in our text uh, this morning, there was a great crowd that was looking for Jesus. They didn't see uh, the disciples. They didn't see him. And so they uh, took some shipping and crossed over to Capernaum because they were seeking Jesus, amen, is what they were doing. You know, sometimes people seek for Jesus, but they don't seek Jesus for the right reason, amen. And we see, we'll see here this morning uh, the reasons why they were seeking Jesus, amen. And some people don't seek Jesus with a true heart. And so, however, it was, it was, it was very difficult. It was not impossible to determine uh, which, where, where each part of the discourse is spoken of. But it is uh, not the. It is all about uh, the what, not the where. It's all about really the information that Jesus is giving to the crowd, giving to these people. And so, dear people of God, this morning, it's vitally important that we understand that the information that Jesus really wants us to understand. And dear believers, it's vitally important that we understand the scriptures in our life. Amen. A lot of people come to conclusions uh, that really don't have anything to do with the word of God. Amen. They think it says that in the word of God, but really has nothing uh, pertinent uh, in the Word of God, Amen. So it's very vitally important uh, to understand w the the words of Christ, Amen. Very important. So before Christ gave this lengthy discourse 
in involving bread, he first had uh, to be located by the people. Uh, the people were looking for him. It says there in verse number 24 in, in our text this morning, it says uh, there, it said, When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Verse 25, and, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? So where did you go? Why did you come here? Uh, we want you to be with us. Uh, that's kind of the, the idea that is being spoken here. And, and they're really, uh, they were really not really seeking him. They were seeking something else. In their life is what they were really seeking. And so we see, dear believers, that when people could not find could not find Christ, they began to search for him. And so that's even today, when people can't find Jesus, they'll find some type of Jesus to help them, but it's not the Christ that's going to really redeem them from their problem, from sin in their life. Amen. And so we see, dear believers, that even though the motivation of these people was poor, amen. Uh, uh, yet they do demonstrate uh, a good lesson here about how to uh, achieve seeking Jesus. Amen. They took some effort. They were toiling. They were uh, really looking for uh, the person of Christ. And so they achieved, achieved it because they put forth a very good effort. It says there, uh, there in Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 7, Seek and ye shall find. And so there's a principle there in the Word of God. These people were seeking. They did find Him, but there was a not for the right reason. It is a good, it is a good prayer promise. And it, there in Matthew chapter 7, and verse, and verse number 7, and a good prayer pro promise, good principle, uh, a good endeavor in any course of the Christian life or anyone, uh, anyone. If they're going to seek for something, they're going to find it. You know, one that's seeking to make millions, they're going to make millions of dollars, amen. One who's seeking to uh, improve the industry, they're going to try to do all their best to try to improve the industry is what they're going to try to do. When you seek for something, you will find what you're seeking for, but it's going to be what product it's it's going to be uh, 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 manufactured, amen? And so we see, dear believers, it's so highly important uh, that uh, achievement does not come uh, to the idle and the slothful. Understand, uh, when you want to achieve something, uh, it's not going to be something done that you're just going to be uh, lazy about it and, and it's just going to fall on your lap. No, when you really endeavor to seek something, to really achieve something in your life, uh, it's going to take some sweat. It's going to take some uh, hard work. It's going to take some uh, brain power. It's going to take all those things uh, for, those, for you to really ac accomplish or to really see the product out of it. Amen? And so we see, dear believers, that uh, the, the, even in the welfare crowd, uh, uh, is not really achieving anything. Uh, that crowd doesn't achieve nothing. Uh, is what they really don't achieve. They only achieve to be lazy. Is what they achieve. And so, uh, uh, and so, uh, I understand some people really deserve that help from the government. Some really don't. Some can actually just get off of their uh, cushions and and actually go and find a, a nine to five job and and really uh, and really uh, uh, be worthy of the food that's put on the table. Amen. So vitally important. So understand whatever you're going to try to achieve, it's going to be achieved only by hard work, sweat and some real brain power. Amen. And so whether in uh, whether in material or in the spiritual realm, spiritual uh, achievement uh, is not uh, uh, achievement is not a. Uh, is not part from uh, good effort. Let's put it that way. It's not apart from good effort. Any kind of spiritual achievement is not apart from really good effort. 
Uh, you're going to work at it. You're going to try to uh, do all that you can, especially spiritually. If you're truly seeking God in your life as a born-again believer, uh, there's going to be a desire that God's given you, and it's going to be a joy for you to just really uh, read His Word and be on your knees and really seek God's face and allow Him to really change your life. Amen? That's what Jesus really wants. He wants your life to be changed. I'm wondering, dear Christian, this morning, do you want your life to be changed? Or do you find it just, you know, I come every Sunday morning to church and this is this my ritual and that's all what we do. It just uh, Sunday morning, we come to church, do that ritual. Sunday morning, we do uh, Sunday evening, I mean, uh, we do the same ritual and on and on and on it goes. Aren't you ever, don't you ever get tired of the same thing? Don't you ever get tired of the same thing in your life? I do. Therefore, I seek God in my life so that when I come to church, God moves in my heart to help me. Amen? To really help me and to really live a life that brings honor and praise to the name of Jesus in my life. And so, dear people of God, that's what should be really taking place in our heart. Yes, we can come to church and do our ritual every Sunday, uh, every Wednesday. We can do our ritual and being there in church uh, bodily yet, but sometimes uh, consciously we're somewhere else is what we are. We're not really here, but we're somewhere else. Are you really going to get involved in, the, in when the message is uh, being preached from the pulpit that you'll say, God, this is what I need. I need your help. I need you to uh, strengthen my life. I need you to take control of my life. Amen. And so we see, dear believers, it's really going to take real strong effort. Amen. Good effort uh, to really seek spiritual improvement, spiritual achievement in your life. Amen. And so we see, dear believers, in this passage of Scripture, we're going to only see two things this morning. Number one, the lecture uh, that Jesus gives here. Number two, the learning, uh, the learning process, the truths that he's going to teach uh, to these people. So number one, we're going to see the lecture. Let's see what Jesus lectures about here. And so we see there uh, is from verses 25 all the way down to verse 27. And so we see that uh, we see something very interesting here. And that's, we already read verse 25. Let's read verse number 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracle, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Verse 27, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which is the Son of Man which shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Amen. Oh, I like that. You know, this last Saturday, every Saturday morning, we do a family discipleship time. And uh, that's what my family has now called is family discipleship time and where uh, we spend time in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. Say, so why so early? Well, uh, why be lazy? Amen. Why not get up early so we got the rest of the day to take care of? 8 o'clock in the morning, we all gather around the table and we learn some things that, uh, this uh, uh, last uh, Saturday, like yesterday, and so we're going through the book of Ephesians uh, in our in that in that family discipleship time, and so we learn some things about the seal, a seal, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit seal that's upon the believer's life, and so we see here this seal that uh, God makes reference of, but really understand that when the people eventually found Christ, the first thing He did. Uh, was he gave them a lecture on their carnal motivation is what he did. They didn't come to seek him for spiritual help. They didn't come to seek him for some uh, Bible truth. They only sought to just be pleased by their own carnal appetites in their own life. Amen. That's what many times what people do. They only look for Jesus only to satisfy their carnal appetites they only come to church because it's the thing to do well that's the wrong thing to do amen jesus says hey 
You don't want, you don't want me. You just want the bread that I fed you with. That's all that you want. And so we see dear believers, he really confronts them with their carnal motivation in their life. Dear Christian, are you carnally motivated to be in church this morning? Is you have some own fleshly, own selfish ambition why you're in church this morning? Is the only thing that is only because it's in your schedule to do? Well, I'm telling you, if that's, if that's the only reason why you're in church, because it's in your schedule to do, that's the wrong reason to be in church. That's the wrong reason to even seek for Jesus for spiritual help. Amen? That's even the wrong reason to even find any kind of Bible truth to help you. If it's only for the carnal means of your fleshly appetites to be appeased in your life. Amen? And so we see, dear believers... We see that uh, Jesus was not blind to the real uh, truth of the matter of the heart. He had a perception. Uh, we can see there in verse number 26, he had a perception. He answered, Jesus answered and said, un, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because uh, ye saw the miracles, but because ye did, did eat of the loaves and were filled. Jesus had spiritual perception that they weren't there for him. They were only there for their own flesh is why they were only there. You know, Jesus knows why you're here this morning. Jesus knows why you do the things you do each and every day of the week. He knows the motivation of your heart. He knows the secrets that you hide within your heart and your mind. He, you can't hide things from God. Never will happen. God will reveal the truth and he will reveal the, the true nature of your heart. That's what Jesus does here. He reveals the true nature of these people. Their wicked and carnal heart is what he does because he perceives of what what purpose they were looking for Christ because they were filled with their they were filled with by their tummies. You know, they were only really seeking more food. They wanted to see a miracle being done where God would turn again, you know, uh something into a, so, something little into something much is what they were looking for. Just so that their tummies would be full. You know, we have a lot of folk like that in church today. A lot of people like that in church today. They don't come to seek Jesus. They only come to just seek their own. Their own fleshly, wicked desire of their own heart is all what they're looking for. So they show up at church, and when there is a church supper, they're there. They're only there because they can have food at church. When we have a church fellowship, is that the only reason why you come to church that day? Oh, I'm going to get food. I don't do it because of the food. I do it because there's the praise, there's the preaching, and then there's the people fellowship. Amen? There's the praising of God. And then there's the preaching, which is the best part of the whole thing. You get, you get edified in the Word of God. And then, you can, and then you can just spend time with God's people afterwards. Oh, dear believers, it's so vitally important. Physical food, not spiritual food, is their main interest for those kind of people. The people that are carnal, people are only selfish. They only think of self. They don't, think, they don't seek Jesus with the right purpose, with the right heart. Not only did he perceive their wicked hearts, but he gave them a precept. He gave them a command. He gave them an admonition from the word. We see there in verse number 25, he says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. You only come for the meat, that's only going to perish. 
not going to sustain you at all. Sure, your tummy will be full, but do you realize four hours later, after you fill that tummy, it's going to be empty again? <laughs> That's the nature of our tummy. It's going to run dry. The tank is going, to need to, is going to need to be filled once again. Jesus says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting. Seek for the meat that is everlasting. Seek for that meat that will never perish. Seek for that meat that will give you joy in abundance. That's the meat that we should be seeking for. That's the meat that, that really brings, uh, uh, brings spiritual uh, uh, stability in our life. Amen. That's the meat that we all crave for each and every day. Those who are born again. But those who are carnal in their minds and lost and only seek for their own selfish gain, they'll be hungry again, is what they'll be. And so we, we learn from this whole precept that Jesus gives. He says there's a, a, a prohibitive uh, precept, this prohibited uh, precept that Jesus gives, labor not for the meat which perisheth. It's only going to decay. The priority, there's the priority in this priest, which endureth everlasting. There's that priority, that one I just mentioned. We're supposed to seek after that priority. Not the, the prohibited one. Not the one that really only decays and, and eventually doesn't uh, really bring real satisfaction in our life. Only the, uh, the one uh, that should be priority in our life should, is the one that's going to give us real satisfaction. But understand there's also a promise uh, within that passage, in that precept that Jesus gives us. And he says, which endureth unto everlasting, which is the Son of Man, shall give unto you. The promise for laboring for the right thing is to, is to gain eternal life. There is the right thing to labor for in life, and there is the wrong thing to labor for in life. If you only labor for your own selfish will and gain, you're never going to be satisfied. If you're going to labor for that which is righteous and holy and bring true joy in your life, you will find satisfaction. You will find fulfillment in Jesus. Amen. You will find it help, find help in Him. Seek it with earnestness, and you will not be dis disappointed in your life. Be earnest in seeking for Jesus. Oh, I'm thinking about there in Romans. Now you may be already thinking, oh yeah, preacher, I already know where you're going with that. Well, there in Romans chapter number 11 and verse number 6, the Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Do you really believe in God, that He's real? That's vitally important. Uh, and He is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek Him. What does that mean, diligently seek? That means you're going to labor. That means you're going to toil with some sweat. That means you're going to use some heart power and some brain power to allow God to change your life. Amen? Is what's going to happen. He's going to change your life. Is what He's going to do. If you let Him change your life. If you don't let Jesus change your life, nothing will ever change. That's only a fact of the matter. Amen. People were seeking food for their stomach when they sought Christ. Amen. Food, that food does not last. That kind of food will never last in your life. Because, like I said earlier, four hours later, you're going to be hungry. The, light, the food, the bread that Jesus gives is eternal life. Life eternal. Oh, dear precious believers, Christ lectured them to seek more important things. Are you going to seek for more important things in your life? Are you going to seek for Jesus in your life? Seek Him because He's the one that's going to bring real satisfaction. He's the one that's going to bring real happiness in your life. 
And so we see the lecture of Jesus because he understood he perceived their wicked heart and he lays out a precept for them. They were to really seek eternal life in their life. And so, dear believers, it's so vitally important we understand this passage of Scripture. Now, let's see what Jesus is teaching. The learning from Jesus. The teaching. You know, right after following this lecture where he just, he really points out the hearts, the condition of the hearts of the people that were assembled there seeking for him. Just remember now, they were not there. They had to take shipping, and so they sailed across the sea to go to Capernaum because Jesus wasn't there. His disciples weren't there. They were in Capernaum is where they were. So they were seeking him. So he gave them this lecture, really revealing the motivation, the darkness of their hearts. And so then Christ went on to give the people some really deeper understanding of the teaching of bread is what he does here the subjects were often prompted by intermittent questions and comments of the people you can just imagine as jesus is teaching this you can just hear you can just see you can see the the gears turning in their minds and they're asking all kinds of questions and there's all kinds of discourse being uh being uh in in uh, uh, enacted in that group of people and, and things were happening God was moving in their hearts Jesus was revealing to them what the true bread living bread really was and so we see that in the first teaching by Christ the people learned about the important matters the lecture really revealed what was really important dear believers you're going to have to really come to the grips in your life what is important in your life is Jesus important or the things of this world more important to you? Really, what you sow, what you shall reap in your life. We just looked at that Wednesday night. What you're going to sow in your life, is that, that's the, evidently that's going to be what you're going to gain in life. If you're going to reap a sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you're going to sow bountifully in the Christian life, you're going to reap bountifully is what you're going to do. And so we're going to learn about four important matters about what Jesus teaches here uh, here in, 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 in the learning from Christ. Number one, the work of God. We're going to learn about the work of God. The question from the people prompted this teaching. Just think of it. Jesus is teaching there. There's all these questions that are coming up. Look at verse 28, the teaching. This is the, this is the question. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? They wanted to, to perform all the wonderful miracles and, and do all these things. Well, we see, dear believers, the question was prompted by Christ's statement in uh, a, a bit earlier in which, uh, in which he used the word labor. You know, they were laboring for something that would only perish. Again, we can, there's that application once again in this passage of Scripture where we can see that they were only laboring for something that would only perish. They were trying to do something in their own flesh. They're trying to really, uh, really try to only incorporate uh, their own selfish power, their own selfish ability to be able to do something. And so we see, dear believers, the people perverted this. Uh, to mean salvation through works and ask what they should work to do. Uh, they, they were perverting these things. They were not getting the right understanding what the bread that Jesus was talking about here. And so this question asked, uh, asked was really asked in pride. It was asked in, and it really ignores, the, <coughs> really ignores the fact that man cannot do anything to gain salvation. Man can't do anything. To do the work of God. It's all got to be submitted to the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Amen. And so that's, that's the condition. You got to be saved in order to be able to do the work of God. But it's all contingent upon our humility and submission to the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. Amen. And so we got to see that, dear believers. These people didn't see that. 
They were blind because uh, their question was fleshly. Their question was this, what can I do? What can I do? It's not about what you can do. It's what Christ has done for you. Amen? And as you submit to him, the section, the second part of that uh, answer is faith. Faith only works in the work of God. We see there in verse number 29, Jesus, so he answers their question. Jesus answered and said unto him, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom ye hath sent. That's the work of God. You believe on Jesus Christ, and then you'll have bounty in your life. You allow the faith of God work in your life to bring power in your life, to really transform your life to the image of Jesus Christ. you got to believe. That's the, that's the hinge upon everything, upon the work of God. Faith in the Son of God brings release from the penalty of of sin, Amen. Oh, dear believers, it's so vitally important that we understand that the, the work that the people uh, are to do for salvation is simply believe in Jesus. That's all they can do is believe in Jesus. There's nothing you can do to earn salvation. Amen. There's nothing you can uh, uh, perform. Amen. To earn it. Faith in Christ is the way of salvation. There is no other work involved. Is this by faith? Amen. It's only by faith. The work of God is only by faith. Salvation is only by faith. And do you realize that sanctification, the growth in the believer's life? Amen. I've been really thinking about a lot about something. You know, we all. I hear a lot about revival everywhere. I hear a lot about revival. And yes, I see that there is a great need for revival in our country, in our province, in our churches. Amen? There's a great need for revival. Understand, dear believers, that when people come to that conviction of the work of the Holy Spirit in their life and confronted with their sin, there's going to be a renewal that's going to happen. That's going to take place in the life of the believer. What's that renewal? He's going to repent.